This is the fastest gaming GPU on the face of the planet, the ROG Strix GeForce RTX 3090 White Edition. And it is so flippin' gorgeous that when ASUS hit us up asking if we wanted to check it out, I was like, yeah, but not right away. I gotta pull out all the stops. We need all white power supply, all white cooler, all white case. We are going full white out for this build and it is going to be gorgeous. Oh, what about our sponsor indeed? Glasswire. With Glasswire, you can instantly see your current and past network activity, detect malware, and block badly behaving apps on your PC or Android device. Use offer code Linus to get 25% off Glasswire at the link below. No, I lied, we gotta put that away. It's the most painful part of pretty much any gaming build. You've got your shiny, sexy GPU, and you don't even get to touch it until you've done all of the work. It might not be up to the crazy premium standards of some of the other components we're using for the build, but the Prime X570 Pro from ASUS is a really solid board. It's got full support for PCI Express Gen 4, thanks to its X570 chipset. It's got four USB 3.0, whatever it is, 10 gigabit per second ports, and it's got two M.2 PCI Express Gen 4 storage ports. So realistically, when it comes to gaming performance, there are no compromises here, with the one thing that's kind of missing for me being higher speed networking. It's only got gigabit LAN. We're gonna be pairing it, of course, with a Ryzen 9 5950X the very same one that you've seen in every video we've done featuring the 5950X because these things are rarer than hen's teeth. And why wouldn't they be? With 16 cores, 32 threads, and turboing up to 4.9 gigahertz, these things are the absolute pinnacle of what AMD can fit in a consumer socket. For system memory, we've gone with an utterly overkill 128 gigs of G-Skill Trident Z Neo 3600 MHz, which I have been informed recently is called the juicer. So uh, one juicer, two juicer, three juicer, and we're gonna wedge in that fourth juicer, a little something like that. As for the reason we've gone with these juicers instead of something more exotic like 4000 megahertz memory, it comes down to AMD's Infinity Fabric. You want to run at a one-to-one -one ratio between the Infinity Fabric and your memory. And unfortunately, on a lot of Ryzen 5000 CPUs, you can't push your Infinity Fabric all the way to 2000 megahertz, which means if you want to run 4000 megahertz RAM, you actually have to run at a one-to-two ratio, which slows down your Infinity Fabric, meaning you got to go way Way higher in terms of memory speed to yield any benefit. So we've gone with 3600 megahertz, which means we only have to get the CPU's Infinity Fabric to 1800 megahertz. As for the CL16 latency, well, it's not super impressive, but remember, these are 32 gig modules, so it's pretty good. As for storage, we've gone zero excuses, absolute top of the flippin' line with Samsung's 980 Pro 2 terabyte PCI Express Gen 4 SSD. This thing uses NLC flash for excellent endurance and performance and has a new generation controller from Samsung, giving it read speeds of over seven gigabytes per second. Oh, it's hot, it's hot. The performance is hot. Ah, don't worry, I threw it somewhere safe and delicate, gentle. It's a good mouse pad there, three and a half millimeters thick, lttstore.com. This thing is crazy balls to the wall. I mean, it's got two gigs of DDR4 memory. It's basically a computer not that long ago. And that's yet another way we're going absolutely top of the line with our cooling. This is the IQ H150 Elite Capellix. I don't know why it's called the Capellix, but what I do know is that it is snow white, absolutely top to freaking bottom. And that really was the only requirement. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not really sure what else there is to tell you about this thing, other than that this is Corsair's latest generation all-in-one design. It's got RGB integrated into the pump, so it's gonna look absolutely freaking awesome. And it fits perfectly in our -da -da -da, IQ 5000X RGB case. You know what's kind of crazy though, Brandon, is as good as this system's gonna look, we are actually not spending that much of our budget on the aesthetics. Like, yeah, 210 US dollars, it's not a cheap case, 
but it's also not crazy expensive, especially considering that you get three of Corsair's excellent RGB fans included in the package. Yeah, I mean, the pre-done wiring for the front panel connectors, the built-in fan hub, the RGB, not bad for 200 bucks, Corsair. Although naturally, for a machine of this caliber, we have not gone that route. Meet the ROG Strix 850 watt white edition. That's right, it's clean. Now I know, 850 watt power supply, RTX 3090, and eh, might not be ideal, but it should be enough as long as this particular unit can handle those current spikes that we see from RTX 30 series cards. And the reality of it is, you guys may or may not have noticed this, but there's like a, a mining situation going on out there, cryptocurrency, power supplies a thousand watt and over, you basically just can't get them. So that it, we're, we're gonna put that in there. There it is, yeah, 850 watt. I wouldn't call it a fatal flaw, but one potential downer of this case is that once your power supply is in there, it is basically impossible to get these thumb screws to loosen the hard drive cage. And furthermore, if you want to install hard drives and you have a even pretty reasonable sized power supply, you pretty much cannot install your modular cables after the fact. So I'm probably just gonna pull the hard drive cage out since I'm not gonna need a three and a half inch drive. That's better. That's not room A, room B, room C, or room D. That's roomy. Get it, it's roomy. Now it's time to pop our motherboard in. Dang, that is looking good. One thing I really like though is Corsair is using a much bigger nubbin to hold the motherboard than before and it's really easy to keep it in place and build upright like this, which I personally do prefer. This is a pretty roomy case. For my cooler configuration, I'm just gonna pull out my fan filter over here. I've gone with a push configuration, meaning I'll be able to see all that smexy RGB from the inside of the system. So the rad's gonna go right there. It's all set up correctly so that the Corsair logo is gonna be right side up. Not that I couldn't move it around if I really wanted to. You can actually pop this plate off and reconfigure it, but now I don't have to, see? One little trick in this setup though is gonna be RGB. Now I thought I was gonna be able to use the pre-installed RGB hub for these fans because they're all Corsair. The problem <clears throat> is that there's one RGB component I did not account for, and that is the CPU block. So for that reason, I'm gonna have to swap out this RGB controller for this one. Fortunately, this is six channels and should have support for the integrated fans. So it's just a matter of popping this out, popping this out, and then plugging the CPU block into this little controller plug here. You know, we were having an interesting conversation before you guys showed up. How fast, like if we teamworked it, got it like right, got it down, how fast could we build a PC? Maybe there's like a world record to be set in there. Or like we could do like a team challenge. <laughs> what do you think? Is that, is that a video? Crapyard work? Get subscribed so you don't miss it. That's gonna be a video. We're doing it. There is a little bit of like pass through airflow from this fan over here. There's a lot of heat pipe on this thing. It's kind of hard to see over here, but like, look at this, plus a vapor chamber. Man, this thing is so freaking heavy and big. It's actually got a triple slot cooler on it. Okay, but there's only a dual slot backplate on it. So I've only got to take out two of these backplate covers here. You know what? I think I kind of found the one fatal flaw in this case. I otherwise really like it. I think it looks like a fantastic deal. It's got this cable management shroud thing here. And the problem is that the GPU sits like right on top of it. So you either have to come over it like this, or you got to come under it like this, which kind of interferes with the fan. Back cable management already looks, you know, pretty darn good. Oh, then we go ahead. Just get rid of all of it. Put this puppy on here. Yeah, yeah, the, all that work you were doing, totally pointless. There it is, boom! Dang, oh. that looks so slick. Like that's the nice thing about a white interior is that instead of the RGB looking like kind of harsh, it has kind of like a softness to it, you know? Cause it's like, it's like RTX on, you know? Global illumination, you got the light bouncing. Wow, that is a good looking machine. Honestly, this case is really impressive. I had not seen it in person before. They've done a great job of maintaining like that clean tempered glass aesthetic, but then making sure that Steve from Gamers Nexus won't rip them a new one for not having any airflow by like <laughs> putting a big vent on the side. 
Everything else about this, I think we can probably crank. Ooh, screen space reflection quality, we're turning it to psycho. Remember, we're running at 1080p here. High refresh rate monitor, so. Ultra ray trace light. No, no, psycho ray trace lighting. There we go. Don't need any of that DLSS. Oh. Except when it doesn't. Because that looks real smooth right about now. I mean, oops. RTX 3090 at 1080p. Even Cyberpunk bows to it. Yeah, that's G-Sync hard at work right there because it actually is not running at that many frames per second. We're sitting around 60 frames per second. Feels really good. It's really consistent. Like our 99th percentile is like 54 right now. 51. Oh, yeah, well, if we put DLSS on quality, this is gonna look nutty. Okay, quality DLSS. Hold on, let's just, let's just see what that looks like. That's real smooth. Like we're running at 100 frames per second. That is fine for a Sight CE game like this. Man, that looks so good. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, I'm not gonna say that it's worth the performance penalty in all situations, but there is no denying that real-time ray tracing can look really, really good. Wow, these guys can take a lot of bullet. Wait, how'd the cops get here so fast? Ah, press X to not die. Oh, still died. Just like I'd die if I didn't tell you about our sponsor. Micro Center. Get the best prices and best selection on PC hardware like this at any of Micro Center's 25 locations across the United States. You can check out their custom PC builder to configure the best custom PC for your price point. And for a fee, you can check Same Day Pro Assembly and their expert in-store technicians will put the PC together for you. And they don't just have PCs, they've got all kinds of technology in store. So go check them out today and follow the link in the video description for a free 32 gig flash drive and 32 gig micro SD card, valid in store only, no purchase necessary. If you guys enjoyed this build and you just enjoy kind of like sick rigs that Jake planned, hey, why not go check out the copper water cooling PC? Yeah, it was all white and copper tubing cooled. Copper tubing. That build was hard.